period, not tackle, but really put guys in position to uh, to grow and learn and to experience maybe what it's like on a Saturday, even though it's minimal of what it really is. Uh, but I think we did a pretty good job installing, putting uh, guys in position to make plays uh, and also new guys uh, to put their best foot forward. That whole combination I thought was a good, was well done. Do you use the spring, you've been through this as a player, <clears throat> want to have a depth chart that's in your mind by the end of spring or do you all approach this as like there's nothing that's going to be settled until August? No, I would say coming through spring, uh, you want to get an idea of some people you want to be able to start relying on. You want to identify uh, points where maybe things need to improve. Uh, you want to, again, start outlining guys you're going to count on in the fall and then pre you know continue to develop them through summer. Uh, identify individually and offensively things that we need to improve on, but also things that we do well. At the end of the day, coming out of spring, you want to start having an identity, and uh, and then putting those guys in position to create that identity is really important. How are you feeling? How is that injury and everything good? Oh, We're good. We we'll play a game right now. <laughs> No, there's nothing I can really say. I mean, all I would say is that in hindsight, I probably would have rather went to, went to bed instead of uh, rode in a side by side, but uh, that's about all I'd say. Yeah. How, how, do you feel like you dodged one maybe a little bit there? Could have been a lot worse? It's always could be worse, but again, there's nothing else to talk about. Having uh, Joe Philbin join, how, how beneficial do you have him? you have a history with him? You yeah. Know him? Having Joe's been great. I think the perspective he gives, uh, the uh, wealth of knowledge that he has uh, as a position coach, head coach, a football coach. I mean, uh, I think everyone in the building can learn something from him. And uh, he really, uh, it's really awesome. I mean, to, to be, to say it's not, you know, a little, you know, pretty cool in my my perspective uh, to see be around Coach Coach Philbin again in a different light, in a different way, uh, would be an understatement. So, very happy he's here. Uh, he's a great addition to our staff. How much do you think you'll beat on him? Because you're a first time coordinator, obviously, and he's he's done it at the highest level. Yeah, I mean, I think we're surrounded by guys in the building that have done it at the highest level and have done it really well. Now. Uh, I'm going to lean on everyone in the room, Coach Day and Coach Fry and Coach, you know, Coach Dennis and Coach Bailey and, and so on and so forth, Coach Alford. But I mean, uh, he's definitely a great addition, and he'll bring something to the room that uh, uh, that will help us. Brad, how do you how do you how are those meetings? I know we're asking you all the time. Is it free to speak? I mean, you know what I mean. How, how would you describe our offensive meetings? Yeah, I mean, how would you describe when y'all are getting together, either brainstorming or whatever? Is it? Everybody free to speak their mind. I mean, how does that, how does that work in your room? Uh, yeah, you encourage dialogue. You encourage ideas. Sometimes the idea that comes out is not the right idea, but it then sparks another conversation, and eventually you find yourself down a road where it's a good conversation. Uh, I would ever, I would hate to have ever have a room where people are nervous and scared to speak. Now you want to make sure you know, you know what you're talking about or those kind of things. But uh, that, that encourages that. But I think the more dialogue you can have with uh, the kind of caliber of coaches we have in our room, it's always a good thing. And so, with like a coach building, are you personally looking for insights from what you know he's observed? You know, maybe in practice. I mean, how, how does that work? How do, what's the interaction? Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Or you know, and tie yeah, to where he's been. You know, sure. I mean, I would say. You know, I'm, he's not just blurting out all the time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's he's waiting to be maybe called upon or pulled aside or whatever. But I'm sure if there's a thing that he believes strongly in, he'd be willing to voice his opinion. Um, again, opi all opinions are are, uh, are welcomed. Uh, I would just say that uh, he's not in there trying to overtake the room. He is very uh, respectful of everyone that's in there. And as much as we're learning from him, I know he's trying to learn from us. Yeah. So. Uh, that's, that's, you know, a pretty normal situation. Yeah. Wait, Brian, with the crash, did you bring that up with the team, with your group, with the receivers? Did you feel like that was something you needed to be addressed? Uh, 
No, but anything, anything addressed or anything that we do will be kept in house. Did, it, did that episode change you? I mean, people have experiences that, that change them. Uh, did, I mean, did, you know, I'm not, you know what I'm asking there. I mean, yeah, you're I mean, kind of a different guy since then. Or how would you explain it? it uh, you know, everything provides a learning opportunity, and uh, I would say it was a learning opportunity. I'm not going to talk about the situation anymore. Or, uh, anymore. Remember when I asked you when you were a player and I said, uh, were you one of those guys who five years old went off the high board? Uh, oh, yeah, that's probably about and right. You said yes. That's yeah. probably about right. Yeah. Five years old trying but, to jump off the high dive. But yeah, but I'm not talking about specifics of that situation, but, but as you go through life, do you feel yourself mellowing a little bit? I mean, do you feel yourself uh, personally mellowing a little? You know, what I mean? you know yeah, you have to. The body doesn't operate the same way as it used to when you were younger. Yeah, yeah. But but I guess what I'm getting to here, when you come that close to like maybe something serious happening to you, which an injury is still serious, but does it does it make you step back? Or, you know. I'm healthy. Yeah. But you want to stay healthy, right? Yeah, that's the goal. Yeah, that's yeah. the goal. Lorenzo was a guy that obviously you guys looked at. Oh yeah. Now he's back here. What makes up about him that he's able to switch to the defensive side? And obviously he's good on offense too. He's a great athlete. You know, always was in high school. Uh, you know, I thought he was a heck of a player. Uh, you know, I, again, I don't want to speak on for him, but. You know, I felt like you know, coming out of high school, he was a good athlete. I felt like I may have told him I thought his best position was corner. Uh, so, you know, I know it's always tough finding the path and, and believing on what you want to do and then maybe switching. I, you know, I, I can only guess how hard that would be. Uh, but I'm really excited he's back. As an individual, as a person, uh, he's awesome. So to add more and more people like that to our locker room uh, is only a bonus for us. What does he gain from having spent two years there? Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's probably a good question for him. Uh, but you'd like to think that he probably maybe some tricks of the trade from a receiver standpoint, and then the things he was trying not to give away. Maybe as a DB, he's trying to pick up on, uh, and then that allows him to, you know, cut the corners in, in, in his new job description. That's sort of the upside of the transfer report, isn't it? A guy who maybe second guesses what the first decision he made. Like Taiwan Malone, you know, y'all were yep. after him pretty hard, and now suddenly he's back in Ohio State. Yep. Is that is that an upside, to, I guess, to the dress reporter that you can fix something that maybe you? I think that any time you're able to provide more power to the player, uh, it's a good thing. Uh, it's their responsibility to use the power the right way uh, and in the right light. Yeah. But I think any time the players are with that with the power, um, it's better off for the sport. Speaking of the transfer portal, sorry, yep. you obviously you guys had a couple guys leave over the course of the spring, and when you're stacking up talent, that's almost, I guess, in this day and age, that's an inevitable <laughs> conclusion maybe there. Did you expect that to happen that quickly, that you would start losing guys from that, that second year class? No, I guess I didn't really have any expectations. I was just, you know, hopeful to uh, continue to, to build and shape the room as best we can. Uh, I completely understand all the pressures that everyone has. And, uh, and frankly, um, you know, what they feel is right is up to them. Uh, but it is just tough, man. I mean, I think at the end of the day, they're just trying, they, they feel like they have a four to five year window and they're just trying to give themselves the best chance. Is the room being as highly competitive as it is? Are you seeing that show up on the field and the results that you're getting out of every, every group that comes through? As far as what? Is it pushing their talent up? Is it oh yeah, I mean, up? typically the more talent you have, the more, you're demanding of the player, and then the more you can demand of the player, the more of the uh, growth you're probably going to get for for each individual. So um, the goal is to continue to add the best players in the country to the room to allow to push those that are currently there and those that are coming. So that's always the goal. That's what we're going to try to do. Brian, you went through 15 practices in the spring. Now you've had time to reflect and fill them on. How comfortable do you feel right now? Uh, I feel pretty comfortable. I'm not not to the point where I'm going to relax. I mean, I think that, um, you know, I take that back. I don't know if you're ever comfortable. I think that uh, I, I'm very honored to be in the role I'm in, and I'm not taking it lightly. Uh, but I would never say I'm, 
I guess I'm comfortable. I, I, I like I like the path we're on. I like the work that's being put in, and, and I'm excited to watch these guys work and apply uh, through summer. Um, I would say that. And where does it stand in terms of play calling? I don't know if I think they decided, or are you still just very early in that process? Uh, Coach Jared handle any of those kind of questions, not me. To go back to to filming, um, yeah, you know, like. The last few years, you guys have had Kevin Wilson in that room, and he had, I think, a certain role, right, in terms of, especially when it came to the run game. Do you, you see Joe kind of inheriting some of that, like kind of that elder statesman as it relates to? Uh, I don't. I mean, I don't know. We'll see how it all shakes out. I'm sure uh, Coach Fry, you know, will, uh, uh, will use you know every asset he has around him, and obviously Joe would be a good asset. Uh, exactly how everything lies right now. I mean, I know uh, we leave, uh, you know. Coach Fry's got a good handle of that run game, and uh, and we'll let it grow from there. But I'd rely a lot and very heavily uh, on Coach Fry. Coming out of spring, the, uh, you may have already been asked this for a walk over, but I've been here almost since the start. Your number one quarterback is? Uh, what? <laughs> your, I said coming out of spring, get it in the summer. Your number one quarterback is? What do you mean? No, so who's your number one quarterback? Who's your quarterback, quarterback right? What do you mean? Okay. I know. That's true. Ask competing for I'm trying to ask you a straight up question. Just ask, just ask who's starting the quarterback. I, I said, who's your third quarterback? Ask them some weird ways and vibes. I, I actually said number one, not starting. Yeah. Uh, what did you see out of those both of those guys that buoys you headed into the summer and then preseason camp that tells you? I would just say the way they work, you know, the uh, not just the allotted time uh, that we are given, they work outside those lines as far as on their own and with the guys. Uh, both guys spend a lot of time that way. Um, the way they compete, the way they still, you know, give each other po pointers, the way they do everything, frankly, uh, is very encouraging. And uh, the competition's only gonna drive both of them. So all of those reasons are why I'm very confident in, uh, in the end process. You know, I know, I was talking with De Devin has a, has a quarterback you know, coach guy, you know, that that gives him pointers and stuff other than in this building, you know, you know from his past and stuff. Where, what is your stance on that kind of stuff? Right? I mean, do you like that? I mean, yeah, that, that's what they want. Yeah, that is, I, have, I have no take on that. Yeah, yeah. I, so, man, I know some, some coaches in the past have, like, we'd rather most of your stuff be coming from us, you know. And, Why? I'm just... I'm just saying what they said. I'm yeah, not saying, I, I have no idea. I'm just saying that I think I'm that control. I think that the athlete always knows, you know, who the coach is, you know, and for an athlete to not to only want to learn from one individual, I think that's kind of short sighted. I think the amount that you can learn from anybody that you encounter and come across, uh, excellent. Now, you may not enjoy working with them, so you don't. But if you enjoy working with them and you can learn something from them, you should try to learn as much as you can from as many people as possible. You've had a lot of special receivers there. Obviously, Chris Wobbing, Gary Wilson, guys that any other program would say is probably the best that's ever gone. we got a guy now that would have been a top whatever draft pick in this year's draft to be an eligible Marvin. How much of a unicorn is he in terms of special yeah, yeah. talent, unique talent? Well, I mean, I think that his unique talent is the is yes. I think I think Marvin is is an elite player. I think Mecca is an elite player. I think Julian's an elite player. I we keep going on this list over and over and over again. Uh, but I think that what makes these guys so elite is the way they prepare, the way they work, the way they do the extra things outside the allotted time. Uh, the way they study film, the way they live. I mean, I think that everything they do plays a part in what you see on Saturday. Um, we, I feel like those questions are, you know, thinking it's just all God given and like he didn't work for everything he got. Like he, he, had, he has literally worked for everything that he has. And, uh, and that's the level at which you see for him, for Emeka, for Julian, all these guys are going down that, that path. Uh, it has not been given to them. Uh, they have earned it. Yeah, and I mean, I don't, I mean Marvin, obviously, you know, we know his father, but, but we see him. But he's a special talent, though. Talent is given. His skill development is 
off the charts well, because of the amount of work that he's put in. That may be, that's not what I was getting at. Mm -hmm. Is that his job? The fact that he has the talent, but he does that in addition to it, above and beyond. Yeah, he does a pretty good job with it. I mean, I think you have guys out there right now in the field catching jugs, and you didn't name any of those guys just now. So I think it's a combination of that. I think it's, um, you know, the ability for one guy to maximize himself. Because as much as you want to work really hard, if you don't have that ceiling, you can't reach that ceiling. So that is a blessing, you know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think I think we have a lot of great players um, in that receiver room, and Marvin's being one of them. Remember long ago? Remember long ago when you were a player? Uh, when you were just running routes in the winter, summer, and things like that, catching balls from whoever your quarterback was, just trying to stay. Team. Were you always playing scenarios in your head? Or, you, know, you weren't just going out there running an app. Correct. Explain, explain what kind of yeah. the, the mind tricks you can play. Well, I just, I just think every time you're doing a rep, you're putting yourself in a potential live rep. I think that you know, you're always mimicking an actual game movement. You're always replicating a scenario or whatever. Like whether you're you know, keeping your toes in on the, on the driveway and falling the grass to catch the ball, or whether you're you know, on a sideline catching the ball, you know, who's it against and what's the what's the technique? You know, there's always that ghost that you're going against. Yeah. And I think the guys are playing the game constantly when on their field. And I think that's really critical. I think just going out there with the, the emotions is one thing, but going with the emotions with intent is a whole nother. Do you see it manifest itself in, with Marvin, for example, because Marvin, for example, in games where it looks like almost like he's been in that situation before the way he either made a move or made a catch. Or I think all of them try to replicate that, that scenario and, uh, and try to uh, put themselves in the situation uh, to replicate it on Saturday. Oh, no, it's a guy who clearly made an impression. Have you seen that continue since then? What do you think is wrong, even as a freshman, you could be on this team? Uh, I think Cardinal had a great spring. I think that I look forward to his growth through the summer. And, uh, um, you know, I want to see what he's able to continue to do, the consistency he's able to play with uh, through summer and through the fall. I mean, fall is a big part, and I think uh, his ability to uh, challenge and make plays and carve out a role uh, for himself on, uh, in the fall uh, will be an awesome challenge. And you're the freshman coming later this week, is that right? They're all here. They're all here, okay. Everybody has to improve, I know. But the number one concern on your board headed into summer and then preseason camp with the offensive side of this football team as well. I mean, we all, I would think it'd be the offensive line, especially a couple of spots well, on the offensive line. I mean, I know everybody's got to get better. I'm just wondering in your mind, where, where's the, where do you yeah, have to have somebody step up? Yeah, I don't think we have, you know, our starting offense outlined yet or defined. Yeah. I think those starters on offense, uh, there's a lot of uh, areas of competition currently and still happening. And I think working through spring uh, and into fall, uh, identifying those guys and the guys we can rely on uh, will be critical. When uh, Simmons from Mecca and Julian both cleared for full activities right now? Uh, I believe so. Yes. I'm sure you've already been asked this, but the addition of Joe Bilbin, what does that bring to the staff on the guy you know? Yeah, I think the addition of Joe has been phenomenal. I think, you know, both from, you know, former head coach, office coordinator, O-line play, the wealth of knowledge when it comes to football. I mean, there's so many litany of things that he brings to the building. Um, how approachable he is, uh, how coachable, two coaches he's willing to be. I mean, there has been so many positives uh, having Joe on this, uh, out of the staff. Um, I can't wait to see him. You know, grow uh, and fester, and just you know. But he's been a great addition. Process, but how that came about? Did he reach out to you? Did you reach out to him? Did you have contact? No, I. That no, we, we had contact, but then I, you know, I kind of gave him the idea, and you know, and he was definitely receptive to it. And we weren't sure if it's going to work out, but uh, uh, between himself and Ohio State and everything, uh, it, you know, it worked out, and I'm glad it did. In general, this is a, a recent thing in college football to have the analysts that are this big part of it. How have you seen the past guys, how, how have they influenced or enhanced the offense when you guys have tried to do uh, Yeah, I mean, I think anytime you can add that kind of expertise to the room uh, in any kind of role, it's a benefit. So, 
as much as we're allowed to, and we're going to try to. For Jaden Ballard, he mentioned it's time. In the spring, he mentioned it's time for him to go. Have you seen that since urgency from him to, to really, you know, kind of? Oh yeah, he's his, his desire and urgency has never changed. Uh, but just because you want it doesn't mean it's happened yet. So um, he's going to keep chasing it. He knows the litany of things that we, we need to hit. Uh, but I'm very encouraged, and I and I think Jane's on a great path. You were, uh, yeah, you were on the Dolphins with the Hard Knocks when Philbin was a coach. You, did you watch any of that? Uh, probably a little at the time, but I don't I don't recall much of it at this point. But I'm sure naturally. But he came off. He came across as such a sort of a genuine, real guy in that in that show. Is, is that him? Oh uh, yeah, Joe's, you're, you're good, Joe's a great dude. Yeah. Uh, Loves ball, uh, very approachable, and yeah. Brandon Ennis has been around here already for weeks, right? Going like yeah, about back close to spring. a month, I think. Is he getting to? How much did that help him? Do you think? Did you see, get to see him yeah, I think it. I think it's helped him a lot. I think uh, really kind of, you know, getting doctored into how we do things and what we do. I think his body's already starting to change a little bit. I think. Uh, he, you know, he's mentioned to me he already feels a little stronger, and and so uh, anytime you can get on campus and get rolling with how it's going to go, it's going to help you. That first month can be, uh, you know, a lot of things happening. Uh, to do it a month earlier than you would have happened, quote unquote, uh, is a huge bonus. You're talking about who? Simmons? Who are you talking about? Brandon. Oh, okay. Brandon. Uh, I didn't hear the question. Once you, you personally. You wake up every morning. You even have to have an alarm clock. I mean, especially since you've been named coordinator. Do I need an alarm clock? Absolutely. Some people just wake up. Some people just wake up. I have three yeah. kids. Yeah. Some people don't even go to sleep. But they, yeah, I, 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 do not, I do not wish myself to ever be that person. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, what what is, what is just sort of like changed about the routine or about the you know the the feeling of responsibility that maybe you didn't have this time a year ago. I would say uh, the stress level is much higher. I would say the uh, the brain does not stop. It used yeah. to stop a little easier. Now it does not stop. Uh, you know, I still have a, I have a great I have a great passion for this school and this university, and so you know, more responsibility just makes more work. It's just the reality. And, you know, if I didn't care so much about it all and the people it involves and Buckeye Nation, I probably wouldn't worry as much. But the reality of it is, is I do highly care on a very, very high level. So, uh, you know, it just plays a bigger part. Uh, the best thing is flashed through your mind at a stoplight in your daydream. What's the best thing? I mean, since you became coordinator, you got one of those brilliant stuff. No, that's a weird question. Light bulb ideas. That's a weird it's question. Pop. No. Or while you're driving. Uh, you know what I'm asking. No, I don't know what you're asking. I, mean, you're, I know you're constantly. Yeah, it's all right. I'm trying, to, trying to figure out. Thinking about widget. players. Yeah. Thinking about players, not players. players. Yeah. 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 And so, what do you mean? At, coming out of the spring, who's a player that just like, wow, man, he, he really. So, he really, he really caught my eye. This guy really made it through. But uh, we've got to figure out a way to get him involved. Other than, you know, the we have guys. plenty of guys we need to try to get involved. Plenty of guys that earn it. Plenty of guys that have shown it. So it's just about, you know, trying to get all that done. Yeah, but not one guy just kind of like I'm not saying he's going to be the star, but one guy that you're just proud of. What you saw. I'm proud of. I mean, I'm proud of all the freshman receivers that came in. And they've done a good job for yeah. the demand that which they uh, they you know get put on them. Now it's for any young player, but I just deal with the receivers, you know, from a day to day basis. Uh, but those young old linemen, they did a good job, man. I mean, there, there was not glaring issues. They did a good job in protection. They they took coaching at a high level. Um, so just the young class in general was uh, very encouraging. Yeah, and one last thing, like you just talked about. About the receiver, the guys that come in here now, this receiver, what you have built is incredibly impressive. And do you, can you sense the pressure that they feel coming into a group that's already like that? I mean, it's, it's a big meeting. I don't feel. You have to ask. I'm saying you can sense 